In this video, I'm going to outline the seven criteria for picking stocks that Benjamin Graham discusses in this book, The Intelligent Investor. And then I'm going to conduct a search to see which companies, if any, actually meet those criteria today. Now this book, The Intelligent Investor, was published originally in 1949 and is still today one of the most well-known and commonly cited books on investing in the stock markets. In the book, Benjamin Graham outlines his theory on value investing, which has been adopted by some very successful investors, the most well-known of which is, of course, Warren Buffett. The basic thesis of the book is that investors should be looking for companies that are undervalued based on their current market price. And the idea is that over time, by investing in a diversified basket of undervalued companies, a person can become a successful investor. Now, of course, all of this begs the question, what criteria would Benjamin Graham or Warren Buffett be looking for when they're trying to find companies to invest in? In chapter 13 of the book, Benjamin Graham outlined seven criteria that intelligent investors should be looking at when they're thinking about investing in a company. The first criteria, adequate size, is just meant to weed out penny stocks or companies that are small enough that they aren't gonna have the kind of staying power that large major corporations would have. In 2006, the author suggested that $100 million in annual sales should be the bare minimum. Now, even that figure is a little bit out of date. So for the purpose of my search today, I'm going to use $200 million as the bare minimum figure in terms of annual sales of the company. The second criteria, sufficiently strong financial condition, is referring to the assets and liabilities on a company's books. And what the author is suggesting is that an intelligent investor should only be looking at investing in companies that have a two to one current ratio or $2 worth of current assets for every $1 worth of current liabilities. Now, the third criteria is just continued payment of dividends. And in 2006, the author suggested that the company should have at least a 10-year uninterrupted record of paying dividends. The fourth criteria was earnings stability or no earnings deficit. And so what the author is suggesting that for the last 10 years, there should be a consistent record of at least some earnings for each common share. The fifth criteria, earnings growth, is of course taking that one step further to only include companies that have grown their earnings per share by at least 33.3% over the last 10 years. The sixth criteria is concerned with the price of the stock compared to the actual value of the assets on the company's books. Now back in 1949, the idea was that the share price of the company should not exceed 1.5 times the value of the company's assets. However, to update that for modern times, the commentator in 2006 suggested that you can increase the price to book value ratio, depending on whether or not the price to earnings ratio is higher or lower. And of course, this leads to the seventh and final criteria, which is that the price to earnings ratio should not exceed 15, or the overall price of the stock should not be more than 15 times the annual earnings. This is another one of the metrics that might be slightly outdated. Given the way valuations of companies have been going, it's very tough to find a company that actually meets those requirements. So for the purposes of the search, I will probably increase the PE ratio to a maximum of 20 or 25, just so that I can cast the net wide and see which companies meet all of the criteria altogether. So with these out of the way, Let's run a search to see what companies today actually meet the criteria from the intelligent investor. Okay, so this right here is the TD Direct Invest stock screener tool, and it's super useful to help sift through the thousands of ticker symbols out there, and you can search by all kinds of different criteria, which I will show you in just a minute. So I'm gonna create a new search using the seven criteria from the intelligent investor to see what companies on both Canadian and American exchanges actually meet all of those criteria. So the first criteria is the size of the company. And I'm only gonna be looking for companies that have at least $200 million in annual overall sales. And that is one of the company basics search criteria here, revenue TTM, which I can add to the stock screener. And I can just scroll this bar over here, or I can type in the answer right here on the left-hand side. But I'm only gonna search for companies that have at least $200 million in overall revenue. And that leaves me with 4,006 companies in the overall pool. The second criteria is that the company has to have at least a two to one current ratio or $2 in current assets for every $1 in current liabilities. So if I just type current ratio in the search bar here, I can add that to the stock screen and I can slide this bar over here until I hit two. And that leaves me at this point with 1,223 companies that meet both of these criteria. The third criteria is supposed to be looking at whether or not the company has paid out dividends uninterrupted for at least 10 to 20 years. Now in this stock screener tool, I actually can't search by that criteria, but the best that I can get is this one here, which is dividend growth rate five year average, which does give a good general idea of the longer term dividend history of 
the company. What I'm going to do is add this into the stock screener and I'm going to filter out any companies that have had a negative dividend growth rate over the last five years, which I feel like is only going to include companies that have been consistently paying out dividends and also have not been decreasing them. So with those three criteria in the search, we're now only left with 267 possible companies to invest in and we still have four more to go. The fourth and fifth criteria are both related to the earnings of the company. One wants to see earnings stability, so at least some earnings per share for the last 10 years, and the other wants to see earnings growth, or at least a 33.3% increase in the last 10 years. Now for the purpose of this search, I'm going to combine the two together, because of course if we're seeing earnings growth over a long time horizon, then we're also seeing earnings stability. For that reason, I'm going to include this search criteria, which is earnings per share growth five-year historical. And since it's only over a five-year period because the stock screener doesn't go back for the last 10 years, I'm not going to look for a 33.3% increase in the overall earnings. I'm going to look for a 15% increase. So with that, we've only got 51 ticker symbols left in the pool of potentially investable companies, and we have two criteria left to add. The sixth criteria is just the price to book value ratio, which I will add to the stock screener. Now, instead of using a 1.5 times price to book value ratio, like was suggested in 1949, I'm going to update that and use a two. So the search now only includes companies that have a price to book value ratio of two or less. The seventh and final criteria is the price to earnings ratio, or what is the price per share compared to how much earnings there are per share. According to the book, we should only be looking at companies that have a PE ratio of 15 or less. Now, given some of the crazy valuations of tech companies today, I feel like 15 is actually quite low, and 2006 was 15 years ago. So I'm going to update the number for the purposes of this search, and like I said, cast the net a little bit wider just so we can see what companies might fall under all seven of these criteria. And so for the purposes of this search, I'm only gonna look for companies that have a PE ratio of 25 or less. So with all of our search criteria in, you can see the numbers have been crunched, and we are left with a grand total of five ticker symbols or five companies traded on both Canadian stock exchanges and US stock exchanges. Here are the only five companies in Canada or the US that meet all of these search criteria from the intelligent investor. We've got two versions of Leonard Corp. They're gonna be two different classes of shares. We've got a company called MDC Holdings Incorporated. We've got Sentiment PLC, and we have Piedmont Office Realty Trust Incorporated. Now, what are these five companies and what has their performance been over the last couple of years? Let's check it out. The first one is Leonard Corp. And we had two classes of shares fall under the intelligent investor criteria. Leonard Corp is actually a residential construction company based out of Florida. Its shares are currently trading for about $100 US and it's got a dividend yield of around 1%. If we look at the one year chart, it's had some really steady growth. If we look at the five year chart, it has also had pretty stable growth, although it had that dip during the pandemic and then actually pushed up quite strongly after that. And if we look at the all time chart, you can see what the story is. You know, around the financial crisis in 08, 09, it really crashed down, cratered, but has been growing steadily since then, coming up to new all time highs. Interesting play. Maybe this would be a good investment. According to the intelligent investor, it meets all of the criteria. The next company is another residential construction company. I feel like we're finding a trend here. This one is trading for only $50 US per share, but it's got a dividend yield of 3%. Looking at the one year growth chart, it's got pretty stable growth. Over five years, it's a very similar chart to Leonard Corp with the dip from the pandemic and then coming quite strong after that. And looking at the all time chart, same idea. It had that big crash coming into and leading out of the financial crisis 08, 09, and has been growing pretty steadily since then, coming up to new all-time highs in April. Although it's had a bit of a pullback over the last month or so, dropping from over $60 a share to $50 a share. The next company, Sentiment PLC, is actually a gold mining company that looks like it's headquartered in Australia, although it also says that its registered office is in Jersey, which I believe is a tax haven. Its market cap is just over $1 billion. It's a penny stock trading for just under $2 Canadian per share. 
Now on Google Finance, it doesn't actually show a dividend yield, but if you go to the Sentiment website, you'll see that they are regularly paying dividends. In 2020, for instance, they paid nine cents per share in dividends. Now let's go back to the Google Finance page to look at the stock chart over the past year. You can see that mid 2020, the shares of the stock were trading over $4 and went up as high as $3.96 Canadian. But then in September or October 2020, there was a precipitous drop and now it's come all the way down to $1.75. Over five years, we're seeing quite a lot of volatility here with this stock and over the all time chart, again, same story. Despite what seems to be a lot more volatility in sentiment PLC as compared to the two residential real estate construction companies, it does still meet all of the criteria from the intelligent investor. The fifth company that made the list is Piedmont Office Realty Trust, which trades on the New York Stock Exchange. It's going for just under $20 US per share, and it has a monster dividend yield of 4.5%. If we look at the chart over the last one year, it's had some pretty stable growth, especially over the last six months or so. Over five years, it's looking a little bit choppier. It's never really recovered from the pandemic drop. And the reason for that, I'm assuming, is that since it's an office realty trust and a lot of people have transitioned to working from home and most people have not gone back to the office full time, then they must be hurting. It will be really interesting to see what happens with this company over the next few years. And if the workforce goes back to working from the office full time or most of the time, then potentially it will recover to those pre-pandemic levels. But if not, then this may actually fall off the list because these search criteria are using historical data. And as that data updates, if this office realty trust starts actually losing money or performing less well than it has in the past, then of course it may no longer actually meet the intelligent investor requirements. So there you have it. There's a quick overview of the seven criteria from the intelligent investor that Benjamin Graham suggests value investors should use when searching for companies to invest in. As you can see though, searching with these criteria, even an expanded version of these criteria in real life doesn't yield a very large sample size from which you can actually choose a diversified basket of stocks. I mean, sure, you could buy all of these stocks and just have a portfolio made up of these five ticker symbols, but over time, I'm not sure if that would actually yield the best results. You'd be pretty heavy into real estate, both residential and the office realty corp, and you'd also be invested in a pretty volatile looking gold mining penny stock. So I'm not sure if that's the type of risk appetite that a lot of investors would have. All of this is leading me to the conclusion that maybe the seven criteria as laid out in the book, The Intelligent Investor, are not exactly applicable to real life modern day investing. By limiting my search to companies that only meet these seven criteria, I've weeded out all of the household name companies and all of the major growth companies that most people would think are gonna have a very bright future. And so while there are definitely a ton of golden nuggets in this book and wisdom worth absorbing, including teachings about how to build up a defensive and diversified portfolio, I'm not so sure that the modern intelligent investor should limit themselves to these seven criteria. That's all I have for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.